Uh, welcome, everyone. Good to be back. I'm feeling very peaceful at the moment. So that's what we want, don't we? That's what the aim is. To feel that peace amongst the chaos. <laughs> I like that actually, it reminded me of, um, it's like the Zen, a Zen whatever story. And it's just that, you know, the rock in the middle of the ocean, when it's, when the waves are really chaotic and crashing over the top, the rock still stays the same. And when the sea calms down and it's all calm around the rock, the rock still stays the same. And that's, that's what we want. That's the, that's the goal. Nothing can disturb our peace. I think that was one of the first things that I, that I read from A Course in Miracles. Nothing can disturb your peace. Wow. It's worth going for, isn't it? Worth knowing truly what that is. And of course we know in our own minds we have many, many obstacles um, to that peace. <laughs> it seems we're in, a, we're in a war with ourselves. That's what we're up against, this, this battle that we keep generating inside. And, you know, we desire that. You desire this battle with yourself. So we can't deny that. And that's what keeps all the beliefs in place through the desire for something else. The desire for something other than the truth. <clears throat> and so that's where we find ourselves in this predicament. And that the egoic voice can be very, very loud in our minds to disrupt um, the truth. And so that's why I, I chose to talk about right or wrong. Because that's what the ego really gives you, only those options. It doesn't want you to have any other options. If you get it right, you're going to have a little bit of joy. But sneaking around the corner, there's always that opportunity that you might be wrong, in which you can be put down again. So you're on this roller coaster ride with the ego through this seeming life, which is no life whatsoever, of these ups and downs of getting it right or getting it wrong. And that is so ingrained, isn't it, when you really look at it, right and wrong. <laughs> it's the whole game. It's this world, right and wrong. Who's getting it right? Who's getting it wrong? And we love that. You know, you think about it, you, that, that's not just in your, in, in your own life, in your own seeming life. We like to look at other people's lives seeming other people's lives and we want to see how they're getting it right and how they're getting it wrong. And so it's very, very ingrained in our minds. And so it's actually really, really good to start really, really looking at that. Because I imagine, you know, if you, if you, if you could see everything that was in your mind today of how many times you've done that, how, man, how much you're judging, you're either judging yourself or you're judging others or you're judging the circumstance as being right or of being wrong and how much that is actually bringing your mind down to the level of form in a way is that's what it is doing right and wrong is is is, is simply form based that's what we perceive all of the time it's in the form the right and the wrong being presented to us but of course it's actually it's actually in the mind it's actually the projection. 
And so you're never going to get it right in form. That's the, that's the thing. That's actually the beautiful thing. That's, that's the escape. That's the escape from this conundrum that we find ourselves in. That all the time we believe in right and wrong, then we believe in form as a um, witness to this obstacle. And just how, how destructive it is to our peace of mind <laughs> when you think about it. Sometimes it's good when you're right. But as I said, just around the corner, you could be wrong too. But seemingly right is good. And as the Course teaches, you have to let go of what is good as much as you have to let go and let go of what you believe to be bad because the seeming good is also a mirage of the truth. Most of all of your thoughts are not real. So they're a big distraction. And so I had a beautiful miracle with all of this. That's why I wanted to share it with you, to share how possible it is. I've had this, I've had this loop for some time um, that's been very difficult for me. And it's been it's this out, seemingly outside, so you know you're in trouble when you think something's outside of you. And it's mainly when I'm doing a task. And I believe that the person is being dishonest. And I get very, very caught up in that. I get very caught up in seeing the error. Seeing the error in the other. And it's like this whole game as played out, I, 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 don't I don't remember a time without it, to be honest. It's just this like pattern. Once I started to spot it, like just turk comes, comes around and around and around. And so the ego knows that this is a wonderful weapon in making me uh, lose my right mind. And it's... I start to then, so, so basically I'm, do, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a job and then the other person is, is bringing forth what they want to bring forth, um, their ideas, whatever. And then I see it as like, no, that's dishonest. That's, that's never, that's never, that's never going to work, particularly when it involves money. So I'll, I work with people outside of the community, other, other builders and things. And so there's this, so start off with there's a belief in, be, in, in being dishonest. So straight away there's a right and a wrong. And then it gets into they, pointing the finger, are the one that are trying to have me over. They're trying to get one up on me. But ha ha, I'm the clever one. And I can see what's going on here. And the more you go down that road, as I'm sure you're aware, um, the thicker it gets. And then the distrust is there and everything that's being said, I'm listening so carefully to the dishonesty I'm reconfirming it in my own mind. I'm just seeing it out there. But it was really, really beautiful this time. So it was that making of wrong, and that's why I thought it was important to talk about this on, on, on the episode this week. Because that is a really difficult thing to get over, isn't it? Making other people wrong. <laughs> Believing that there's someone else outside of me to make wrong. And we all have our certain triggers that we get, we get caught up in. And so they're the very ones that we want to really, really unwind from. And so this one has been turning around in my mind, as I shared, since God knows how long. And I've never been able to see a way out of it. But what I have felt is each time this has come up, my awareness has been building to see more and more and more. And each time it's come to the point of where in the beginning, of course, I have wanted to make them wrong. It starts in that way. And I'm angry, I'm annoyed, I'm upset. And I'm really believing that this is, that this is true, that something's going wrong. And, that, and, and in particular, that they're wrong. 
and I've got to protect myself because they're trying to get extra money out of me or whatever it might be. But this time what happened was is that the pattern appeared and I, was, I got angry, I was angry and I was annoyed and I was upset. That still happened. And then as I sat down with it, I just saw it as, okay, here it is again. And it was just, I, 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 can't, I can't go down this road again. I just can't, I cannot do it. I really, really cannot do this again to myself or to the other, in fact. That was actually very important. That was actually how it started, I thought. No, I can't do this. I can't be, I can't be blaming in this way again to the other because I didn't feel at peace. I didn't feel good. And that was, that, that was the barometer. I did not feel good. It didn't feel good in blaming. It didn't feel good in being right. Even though, of course, as the ego does, the ego sets it up to prove that I'm right. So does it feel good to be right? No. No, it didn't feel right, good to be right because I'd already blamed my brother and wanted to make them wrong, even though they, they, they didn't know this. But of course, it's all, it's all in the mind. It can all be sensed. And so I really, really took it back. And what I found with this, which is the most important thing, is I, as I was sitting there taking it all back, I don't know whether you were at the Tron <laughs> when David showed Tron last week. It was amazing when he takes back the projection. If you haven't seen that movie and you want to see a good movie about taking back projections, watch um, Trent, Tron Legacy. Absolutely brilliant. It's the final scene, is the most important part. He takes the ego right back. And so I felt like I was in this, in, in this situation of, okay, I have got to take all of this back to my mind. I do not want this. And basically I just felt like I was on my hands and knees because I've been here before. You know, it's the same scenario playing out. So it's just like, I don't know how to get over this. I don't even know how I'm creating it. God help me. And it was actually more simple <laughs> than I thought. I always felt like, because it was a seeming pattern that seemingly occurred, I always felt like there must be some sort of healing. There must be something that I'm not getting that needs to be healed within my mind. And so I am just not seeing the lesson. I'm just not seeing it for what it is. But of course, now what I'm seeing is, is I had an... I must have had an idea, even though I don't, have an, I, I don't have an idea of it, but I must have had some sort of idea as to what the healing was going to look like in, this, in these situations, but I didn't know what it was. So already I'm sort of, it's in the background of how it's supposed to look. And it's just never turned out that way, even though I still don't know what it's supposed to look like. It seemed like that, that's what the resistance is. Um, and what happened was, is through my prayer, as I, sat, as I sat back and I was taking it all back into my mind, no, I don't want to be hating him. I don't want to be upset with him. I am not doing this to him or to myself. I cannot do that because this is a pattern. So I know, it's, I know it's actually not the other. What happened was, is that all of a sudden I remembered my, my day how I'm setting my mind up each, each day. I expect miracles. I expect to be joyful. I expect to be happy. Um, I expect enlightenment. I expect spectacular things. Um, nothing to be barring my way. Everything will be given that is needed. Everything that serves the whole will be given completely and utterly. I give myself over to this beautiful moment, to this beautiful configuration. And I thought, yes, this is not part of this day. That is, this is nothing to do with it. I am now, I am siding with the ego. And I am choosing not to do that. I, I, I don't want to do that any longer. And this was the simple choice. It was the simple choice that I didn't have to go down the same road. And so it wasn't in alignment I thought this isn't this isn't miracle minded. This isn't this is, this, in following this thought system isn't taking me into the miracle. It's just not miracle minded at all. 
And what I saw was, wow, how interesting it is. What of a great hook it is, is rather than staying in my miracle mindedness, which I've set my whole day up for, I've all of a sudden, I veered off over to here in this old dead pattern that loves to hook me. And now I'm putting all of my attention over to here and I'm trying to figure it out over here at the level of the form where it's never ever going to be fi figured out. Um, and I'm just getting myself more and more upset, more and more worked up because I felt like I had to resolve this scenario as if it was like some sort of personal um, resolving that needed to happen. And it was like, well, no, I'm not, I'm not staying in my right mind. And so I just came, I came back over here and I just felt, I just said, no, that is not the miracle. Whatever has happened, has happened. And what I saw was, is no, no one was to blame. All he was, he was bringing me, um, he was bringing me all of his thoughts, which is, which if we want to look at it, it's just a deeper, deeper prayer. And that's how, that's my, how, how I got to look at it was, it's just a deeper, deeper prayer. It's just a huge prayer. And everything is coming, which is actually only ever coming from me. And so, um, we'll take it as, as if it is a person. And so he's just praying with me and he's doing nothing wrong. And he's brought his prayer to the table. He's brought what he feels to the table. I've brought what I feel to the table. Others have brought what they felt to the, to, to the table. And now what, what, what he brought, is it in alignment with the miracle? No, it didn't feel like it was in alignment with the miracle. So there's no need to make anybody right or wrong about it or get stuck into it. It's just like, okay, then we can, we can um, pass that by and we can stay in the miracle. It's actually that, 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 that simple, but it's those ones that we believe that hook us. And so, of course, I had that little bit of wavering and I realised that I just don't have to do it any longer, that I can, I can stay in the miracle and that I can be truly, truly happy. And if it's not a happy thought, then I just pass it by. And so it's a, it, it, it was a gift. It was like, thank you for bringing what you've brought um, to the table. So we can see, so we can see the whole picture and we can really, really deeply listen to what the prayer is. So if we look at everything from the perspective of mind and we look at everything from the perspective of prayer, then everything is extremely helpful to finding what, what is going to lift us higher and higher in our mind that's going to take us beyond the form, beyond all of this world. That's the only thing that we want. And so when these things come up, we can literally pass them by. There is no need to be putting any attention, any mind energy into anything that brings us down. That the guide, the inner guide, wants to show us something so, so beautiful. And it's not saying, well, you're going to have to learn these lessons and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to bring you down now. It's like, no, that's not what's happening. That's part of the, that's part of the ego's game. And so once I saw that, then... I was able to, okay, I'm just going to let that go. And I'm now going to pray into what is the prayer of my heart. And so that just came in silence because I didn't know how to move forward with the seeming form. That's what we're using. We're using the form, aren't we, to help us with our mind training. And of course, what I'm sharing is the most important part. It's not ever about getting, getting, getting the job done. It's about the lessons of the mind training. So... Then when I sat back, it's like, okay, what's going to, what, what, where, where is the joy? That, that's the next prayer, okay, where is the joy? And then it's like, there must be a miracle waiting for me. There has to be, there has to be. It, 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 the miracles haven't dried up. It's here, it's waiting for me. So that's what I'm going to stay in. I'm going to stay in this place. So that's what I did. And the prayer became, actually, it wasn't for anybody else to do it, but I had to take it on myself. I had to take the task on myself. And I thought, and of course, so we, 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 we often look at things, time, energy, whatever, where am I, what's needed. But somehow that was, that, was the, that was the part that I thought, I'm supposed to do this. So I thought, okay, then that's, that, that's, where, that's where I came to. And I was actually a bit reluctant to, to, to share that with the team to see what, how, how they were feeling. So it was funny when I came back to the team, I said, oh, how have you, how, how's everybody been feeling about everything? 
and everybody felt the same. No, I didn't feel good. At, I didn't feel good about that. I, I really had to look in my mind to, to, to heal whatever was there. Wow, that's beautiful. That's, that's awesome. But the same prayer came out. I think we're supposed to do it. We're supposed to do the job. Yeah, that's what I got. And then we're back in the joy. And then it became so, so joyful that we knew that we had to join more deeply as a team to, 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 to move forward. And that was where our joy was going to be. And so that was, my, that was my beautiful, beautiful lesson, that even when it looks like things are going wrong, in actual fact, they're, they're always going right and there's always a miracle waiting. And so if I don't start my day in the right place, this is what this is, I think this is the, this is the most important thing. This is where everything goes wrong. If you don't start your day right in miracle mindedness, you're screwed. I'm going to put it to you straight. And we've all done that. We all forget. I've done it. I've been really great for a long time. I have been remembering. So praise the Lord for that. But it is easy to forget. So I know what that's like. But trust me, it's really, really messing you up. And it's really, really sets you back. It's a big delay. Whereas if you get up and you set your day up right and you set your day up for miracles then you've always got that to fall back on. You know, it's like the setting of the goal section. That's what was coming to my mind. It's like the course becomes more and more alive because it's not a book, is it? It's not, it's not something that we're reading. And yeah, we're going to learn some knowledge about it. And then I sit here and share, share some theory with you. It's a, a direct experience. And so, yeah, that setting of the goal, as he teaches us in that, if you don't set your goal up front, the ego has got its own goal, which is no goal, which is basically running you ragged and is going nowhere. And as long as that goal is up front, no matter what happens throughout the day, is you always can revert back to the goal. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't match with the goal, then we know it's not of the Holy Spirit, because that is what's truly given in your deepest prayer of your heart. And so that's what we always want to remember. So that's why it is so vital that you set your day up with that. Because like with me, that's what pulled me out of this slump of this. I mean, and it has. It's been, it's been awful, um, that um, pattern of mine of this distrust and dishonesty. And they're doing this and they're doing that and pointing the finger. And it's been awful. But probably because I wasn't setting my day up correctly and I was wanting to be right about things. But if I'm deeply, deeply in my prayer and deeply, deeply in the miracle, then everything is always going to be possible and the answer will always be shown. And it just goes to show that I am not in charge of that healing. And I think that was the other point. I, I think I knew, I knew how I was going to heal it or something like that. But it wasn't. It was so simple. I just had to pass it by. I just really had to say no to it. And that, 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 that has been simply it. And it was just wonderful. I just felt this, oh, it just felt like such a relief and it still does. I feel so grateful that I can share that with you, that a seeming deep pattern, I mean, of course, as Jesus says, there's, there's, no, there's no such thing. It's just, it's just an illusion in your own mind made real. That's all it is. And it's nothing, it's, it's just a shadow in your own mind. And so we all have these patterns. You have these certain patterns in your mind. That's ultimately what we're looking at. That's what we've been sharing on here. Um, that's what we're all helping one another with to really see those patterns in our mind that are disrupting us. And of course, the ego wants to really, really bring us down and say, here we go again, you failed again. This is so difficult, you're never going to get out of it. And it's always wanting to bring you down. But hopefully this experience is showing you that it's very, very possible, even with something that has haunted you since time began. And it's just simple. It was just simple. The whole, the whole lesson was you just got to pass it by. You don't have to be buying into that. So, oh God, it's just so hilarious how simple it is. And that's what, you know, that's what I'm always sharing in my, in my mind. <laughs> I'm sharing with myself how simple, it's simple. I'd probably say that every episode. It's so, so simple. But yet the ego wants to make it complicated. And so that's what I saw that I did. I believed that it was going to be complicated. 
I believed that that pattern was going to be complicated and it really, really wasn't. It was simply keep going forward, keep going into the miracle. So yeah, that was my, I just feel so, so grateful for that. I feel deeply, deeply grateful for that. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't have to be hard. The ego's hard on you. And that's where that right and wrong is coming from. In your mind. But pass it by. Stay in the miracle. You know, and this is, and, and give yourself that credit because that's what you're doing now. That's what we're joining in, so, so deeply. You've turned up here. We're joining in this together. You're not alone. We're strengthening the truth together. We cannot do that on our own. And we need that reminder, the remembering, always. And that's the only reason why we share. We're sharing to strengthen the power of our mind. That there is no obstacle that you, that cannot be dealt with because it's not you that deals with it. <laughs> that's just the beautiful thing about this. That's what we have to learn. Again, I think that was the other part of the and the lesson that I was going to somehow, I was responsible for that healing, for that pattern. And I'm not even responsible for that. But that has to be, that has to be seen. We can't just say that. We can't just turn around and say, well, I'm not responsible. When we feel responsible. We have to deeply, deeply see it. And once it's seen, it will be, it will be let go of. <laughs> Completely. Hmm. Yeah, so I just feel so grateful that I get to strengthen this in my mind. Because what's waiting behind all of that is the peace. Yeah, and in actual fact, that's what I got from last week's episode. It was very, very beautiful for me. And thank you for all your comments. And sharing all your wonderful experiences. It just feels like a blessing for the universe. And for me, um, the title was, if you didn't see it, was called uh, The Power of Who You Are. And the reason why that came about is because last week I had this beautiful experience whereby I felt 
I felt so much power coming through. It's this beautiful, beautiful strength. Miracle-mindedness, call it what you like. I mean, there's nothing, you can't really describe it, but I just felt that. And then that seeming left, and I wanted to strengthen it in, in my mind. I wanted to strengthen that power in my mind. So I thought, let's talk about that. And then, of course, the ego comes in and <laughs> says, who the hell do you think you are to talk about the power of who you are? <laughs> Get over yourself. <laughs> and there was a concern because I wasn't feeling that power as I perceived it again. And what happened last week as I sat down in this very chair is as I was doing the show episode and I was expecting to, that was my prayer, okay, you're gonna to have to show me this power because I can't be putting out these prayers out there and nothing happening. That's why I'm doing it, I need to experience this. And sure enough he did, but it was different than what I thought it was again. What I thought to be right. <laughs> because it was the peace. The peace was the power. Because as I was talking last week, is I could hardly talk towards the end, if you can remember, if you saw it. <laughs> because it was just, the peace was just coming and coming and coming and coming to me. And that was the power. But I was used to this other sort of energetic power. But what he was showing me was, it's different than what you think. And he showed me the peace in another way. That the peace is very, very powerful. And so that felt like such a blessing. And so this is what we get when we take off this right and wrong. We have an experience and then we think that there's a right way to have an experience. There's a wrong way to have an experience. And really, what are we doing? We're telling the spirit, we're telling the truth what to do. This tiny illusion is telling the truth how it should behave. That's what we're doing in any given moment. It's beautiful to see that, isn't it? It's like, I think I know. So we have these beautiful experiences as, as, as we have. And then now, I'm, I now think I know something, and now I'm telling the truth what to do. That's the very problem. <laughs> and then we wonder why we're not having an experience. Because you want to be right about how the experience should go for you. And how it shouldn't be. And so when you're in a different experience, that is wrong. And of course, then you're back into the land of the ego and you're not being open-minded. We're back to this subject again. We're not being completely open. And that's where this right and wrong really, really gets us. And from that is actually this I know, isn't it? I know something. I know how this should be. And if you know, then there's no room for anything new to come in. Very, very disruptive. I know I'm right. And so all the time you're completely and utterly squashing your own experience. <laughs> you know, it's hilarious when you can really see it. Because it's like that tiny identity, that's where the, such a strong belief in that tiny identity is trying to be the truth. And it can't be. Oh. 
Oh, I'm so grateful for this. I'm, I'm seeing it in a new light. <laughs> I'm seeing it differently for myself in this very moment. That's beautiful. Yes, another step in humbleness, isn't it? To say that I don't know. That's actually the, the answer to our right or wrong question. Because right or wrong, we can pass that by. And we can just be I don't know. And we can open ourselves up to everything and everyone. That is our that is the goal, to not exclude anything. Because that's what right or wrong is doing, isn't it? It's exclusion. And if we're doing a Course in Miracles, we're into inclusion, including everything, not exclusion. And that's been the, the uh, yeah, that's, that's what we've told ourselves, to not include, but to exclude. And so we're taking that back. And we're so used to rejecting certain parts of the illusion of the dream. And we haven't thought about actually taking it all back to our own mind. <laughs> Just like he does in Tron. So I'm going to recommend that again because I watched that the other day and I woke up and I woke up in the morning. And that was part of my little prayer meditation once I did all my miracles and things. And then I, I watched the very end scene of Tron and I thought, there you go, this is my day. This is what I want to do. I want to take that back. And I could actually feel there was this discomfort coming up, but in a beautiful way, because it was that discomfort that I knew that the ego was not happy. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> squirming away inside of me. Like, oh my God, stop doing this. This would be the end of me. <laughs> so it was a beautiful sort of bit of resistance <laughs> there. It's just like, yeah, no, I'm going to take it all back. So that's what we're, that's what we're doing together today. So yeah, I recommend that. You can go on YouTube and you can um, check out, just tr type in Tron Legacy end scene if you don't want to watch the whole movie. And you could just see him take back the whole of the projection. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, so that's a, that's a beautiful gift. And then you can watch that every day. And it's just like a course in miracles in a little image. That's just your forgiveness work every single day. So you could set yourself up with that every day and see what it does to your mind. Oh. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and Esther, you wrote in about, you wrote to me a question. You wrote about the laws of chaos. Um, so thank you so much for that. That's so beautiful. I'm so grateful you did that. I actually, I did read through the section. I read through the whole thing. I'm not sure if I'm going to address it now. So I think so much has come up and I think maybe even I, I have even addressed it in, in some ways. I hope you have got something um, from that. I mean, because the main, the, the main point really, well, there's, there's many main points in it. I recommend you reading it. But only the truth is true. And that we want to make up our own truths. And that's, again, the right and wrong. We have a belief in what we believe to be true. But we don't allow ourselves to see what the truth is. And again, that's, that, that's the block. And what he says right at the end of that actual section, where he says, you're not even living. There is no life outside of heaven. So unless you're completely and utterly in your right mind, then you are in the illusion. And so he then, then puts it back to us, which is exactly what we've been talking about today. And he said, but how do you know then that you're in your right mind, that you're in heaven? 
by the way you feel, by the peace. That is your barometer that you are moving in the right direction towards the truth. Anything else is part of the illusion and needs to be forgiven. And that's how you dismantle the laws of chaos. And as, we, as we've actually seen well, we can see how chaotic this world is. We've seen how chaotic our ego mind is by creating all of these loops and patterns that we can simply just pass them by. And another very important part in, in that is actually there's the getting me mechanism of the ego. And the opposite of that is the giving to have give all to all. Don't think that he will not provide for you because he will. Your job is just to give to everyone and everything. And that's why we have a, we have a saying in the community, which I think is very beautiful. It's like live this day like there is no tomorrow. Because there is no tomorrow. Give everything now. Give absolutely everything. Be so satisfied with this day because you've given your heart over to the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you so much for that, Esther. And if, if I didn't answer specifically what you wanted me to talk about, please, please write again and I'll be happy to, to go over it a little bit more. And it was very beautiful and thank you because it brought a lot of peace to me. So thank you, Esther, for that. I feel so grateful. And thank you, everyone. And again, if you do have any questions or anything, you can write to me. You can share your miracles or you can share what's on your heart. So thank you so much for joining me. So as always, let's stay in the miracle. Let's stay in the love and the joy. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>